I really like time travel movies, but some of them have this really big flaw in them, beyond, of course, the fact that we can't go back in time. To explain this, I'm going to have to first talk about the clockwork universe and chaotic systems. Back in the 1600s, Isaac Newton gave us three laws of motion and the law of gravity. Using these, we can calculate where the planets will be a million years into the future or a million years into the past. Before Newton, people came up with crazy ideas such as Helios, the sun god, who would pull the sun across the sky using a horse and chariot. After Newton, people realized that things are kind of predictable and the idea of a clockwork universe came about. Just like on a pool table, if you're given the initial position and velocities of all the pool balls, you can calculate all the future collisions. Theoretically, if you knew the initial position and velocity of every atom in the universe, you could calculate the future. This idea of a clockwork universe has freaked out some people, particularly with regards to what it has to say about free will. Thanks to chaos and quantum randomness, the future can't be known, although neither one of these allow for free will. Chaos is the reason we'll never know the weather more than a few weeks into the future. The weather is a chaotic system. You've probably heard of the butterfly effect. The idea is a butterfly in Japan flaps its wings, and that determines whether or not a hurricane goes over your house in Florida later on. On the DVD of the movie, The Butterfly Effect, there's a bonus video where they show us a double pendulum as an example of a chaotic system. The double pendulum is just a single pendulum with another single pendulum attached to the bottom of the first one. If you're given the initial position and velocity of these two pendulum bars, then you can, with a computer, simulate where everything will be in the future. What's interesting is that if you change the initial position of just one of the bars by one in the tenth decimal place, you get an entirely different solution after just a few seconds. Some things are easier to predict than others. With the planets, we can go out to a million years, although not out to a hundred million years. And with the double pendulum, we can only go out for a few seconds. And these are much less complicated than a human brain. Let's say you're just stepping out to go to the grocery store, and at the last second you remember that you've got to go back and get your grocery list. Or well, you don't remember. That could be due to a single electron in your brain. Let's imagine two universes, one where you go back and get your grocery list, one where you take off without it. Now, the extra time it takes you to go back and get the grocery list means that version of you won't make the traffic light that the other version of you did make your presence or non-presence on the road will affect other human brains. The person behind you at the traffic light changes her train of thought based on what she reads on your bumper sticker. Soon the world will be entirely different all because of that single electron. The world is so chaotic that I predict that just turning one rock over on Mars will affect who becomes president decades later. As a thought experiment will make an exact copy of the universe. Every atom's position and velocity will be identical, except for that one rock being turned over. Sunlight reflects off of that rock, and some of those photons make it back to Earth, and they interact with the air molecules in the atmosphere and change the weather. We know that wars have been won or lost based on the weather, so it's not hard to imagine things could be drastically different given enough time. If this happened 20 years before you were born, you wouldn't even be born. In fact, none of the same people would be born. A hundred years on, you may have roughly the same number of billions of people in both universes with no duplicates. Now, in doing this thought experiment, I left out quantum randomness. In reality, we don't even need to turn the rock over on Mars. We could make one million exact copies of the universe 20 years before you're born, and you wouldn't be born in any one of them. This is because for you to be born, we need the right egg and sperm to come together. <clears throat> and given 20 years of quantum randomness, or even 20 days, the likelihood of this is less than one in a million. When I see a time travel movie where someone is told, be careful when you go back there that you don't interact with anybody important because that will change the future, I just face palm. As soon as you show up, things are gonna start being different. And all those changes won't affect the people you left back in the future. 
they're on another timeline, which may or may not still exist. I hope you can see that because of the highly chaotic nature of the world, and because of quantum randomness, that there's a big flaw in all these time travel movies. Beyond, of course, the fact that we can't go back in time. This is the double pendulum program I wrote after seeing one in the bonus video on the DVD of The Butterfly Effect. There are two double pendulums, one red and one blue. We start off with everything not moving. Both have the inner bar pointing straight up. We measure from down, so they're both at 180 degrees. Both of the outer bars are at 150 degrees. When we start the simulation, the two will run together for as long as you like, because everything is identical. Now we go change the initial positions so that one of them has the outer bar at 150.0000001 instead of 150 degrees. Now when we run the simulation, we notice things change drastically after around 12 seconds. The elapsed time is displayed in the upper left corner.